Welcome to the very first weekly episode of the Weekly Sin, which is brought to you by Rockstar. Today's topic is going to be what collecting was like from 2009 all the way up to currently November 2017. Let's get started. So basically, I wanted to talk about uh, what collecting was like back in 2009 when I really started getting into it all the way up until now. Of course, it's never going to be the same as it was back then. Um, I found a lot more deals um, in 2009, 2010, 2011, even in 2012 um, than I have like from 2013 all the way up until now. Basically, the excitement isn't there as much as it was um, for when I go out game hunting or even out of town. Um, I remember, you know, back in 2011 when I lived down the street from my aunt's house and me and uh, me and my brother and a couple of buddies or whatever would go out of town to like Cedar Rabbits or Davenport and we would come back with just bags and bags of stuff that we would find, you know, magazines, video games for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, even Sega, and, um, it, I mean, it was, it was awesome. I mean, the excitement. I mean, I couldn't wait. I would look forward to the weekends. I would look forward, you know, getting up early in the morning, even though I, what, back then I wasn't really a morning person. Um, I am now, because my job requires it <laughs> but anyway I mean I I could find a bundle of NES games of like 15 games for for about 20 or 30 dollars off of Craigslist and I mean you can't even find that anymore I mean, it's just I, I believe that that collecting for older video games um, spanning from the NES, even Atari, man, even Atari 2600, all the way up to, you know, PS1, PS2, has has gone out of control. There's way too many resellers out there that just want the money. I all only see dollar signs. And um, it's hurting, it's, it's hurting what game hunting used to be like, and it has been hurtings for a while, for quite a few years now, since 2014, in my opinion. I mean, I, I just haven't, it makes me not even want to go out anymore, because there's going to be, uh, I don't, I don't want to say resellers, I want to say scalpers, because resellers, they negotiate. Um, they'll, they'll actually be at the fucking stores, like, early in the morning, every day, um, whether they have a job or not, I don't know. Even if they don't have a job, I have no idea how they afford to do this unless they're on Social Security. But it just... It, they take the fun out of everything. I mean, it's not... <laughs> alright, alright. I believe that we, the community, the, the OG community from 2000... I want to say it's the retro gaming... Uh, community on YouTube started at about 2009 to 2010. That's when the big YouTube retro gaming community started, in my opinion. Um, when everybody, when when the collectors out there would, would start to come on YouTube and open up about their collection and show off what they would get, um, I believe that we are kind of to blame uh, for the spiking in game collecting, especially the older stuff. Um, for the fact that we would announce where we got our stuff at and how much we paid for it and the deals that we got. Um, I, just, I mean, honestly, you know, we all didn't even think of it at the time. We just wanted to do it, you know, something for fun. We didn't want to make this into a job. We didn't want to put any extra hard work into this as it, as it would have to, or as you would have to, just to, you know, get a few subscribers. Um, I mean... Now it's just out of control. 
I mean, people want like seventy to eighty dollars just for the NES console with a controller and a zapper with no game. Um, Mario Duck Hunt, people want like twenty, thirty dollars for that game. They don't care how common it is. Um, I mean, it, it, but gaming basically turned into what baseball card collecting uh, used to be. It just fucking it, there's you got your commons, you got your um, uncommons, and then you got your rares. Which I mean, technically every collector, including myself, has to have a little bit of drive to collect for that reason specifically. Because they know the values of the games, and they want to collect for the values. I personally, yeah, that's I think that's kind of cool, uh, only to an extent, to where you know, if I find everybody wants to find a deal, everybody wants. I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're like you know a YouTuber on here that has like over a million subscribers, and that's a game collector and that goes out collecting. You want to find a deal on a game. Uh, I mean, people, some people out there are willing to pay the the going rate for like, uh, I don't know, uh, the surprise of Dinosaur Peak for like four or five hundred bucks. I'm not willing to do that. If I find it for five or ten dollars, yeah, um, I'll, pop, I'll, I'll pay that price for it and I'll get excited about it. I'll probably keep it in my collection. I don't want to sell it. But if I find a game, a rare, hard to find game, I'm probably most likely going to buy it and trade it for stuff that I want for my collection. I normally don't sell games unless I literally have to, and if an emergency comes up, or or something of the sort. But mainly, you know, I I like for example, I got Tales of what was that? Tales. I don't even know the remember the fucking name of the game, but it's a it's a Tales a Tales of Destiny two. There we go for PS one, and I guess that game is like around a hundred bucks to one hundred and twenty dollars. I picked that game up, kept it for a couple of months, and I traded it off for, uh, fuck, what did I trade it for? What did I trade it for? I can't even remember. But I know I traded it for some games that I wanted. I want to get my Genesis collection back up to where I used to have it, which was over 100 games, and then complete the box. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that I still want to collect for. Um... I'm not going to be as much excited as I used to be when I go out collecting. Like, I would go out, if I were to go back in time, in 2010, 2011, between 2010 and 2013, I would probably be more excited to go out and collect for video games. I'd probably do it almost on a daily basis after I got off work. But now, I only do it maybe once a week locally and probably once every I'll go out of town game hunting probably once every quarter of the year or every six months I mean it's just not it's not fun anymore all these people all of these reseller or not resellers sorry excuse me all these scalpers like to go out grab all these deals and then resell them to make a dollar that's fine they can do what they want but I'm just saying that it takes the fun out of game co game collecting, game hunting for collectors such as myself. I mean, I'm not going to waste my gas to go down to Cedar Rabbits or Davenport or even fucking um, the Quad Cities to, you know, spend $100 on one game and then come back. No, I'm not going to do that. If I want to do that, then I'm just going to stay home and go on eBay and spend that $100 on a game. When I go out of town, especially if I drive more than an hour away, I want to be able to use that hundred dollars to get like you know a couple of grocery bags uh, full of stuff. Um, I mean, normally you can't find any more deals out there, good deals or whatever, but they're still out there. They will always be there. You just have to keep an eye on on at wherever you look for deals or or whatever. Um, Myself, I got a couple. I got a couple of resources that let me know if there's a deal uh, here or there, or they'll message me saying, "Oh, I'll go to the Facebook Marketplace. They have this on there," and I'll talk to the person. Um, but anyways, yes, they're still out there. I got an NES complete in the box with everything in it. 
besides the game. That's the only thing that's missing. 30 bucks. Um, you can check that out in my recent pickups video. I believe it's the third or fourth one before this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're still out there. And, I mean, you just don't give up. Don't ever stop. If you're a collector and then this shit makes you want to stop like it has me, all you had to do is just stop and think, okay, one of these days there's going to be a deal out there. And it, it will happen. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, but it will happen eventually. Um, I'm not going to stop. I'm always going to be a collector at heart. I'm never, I'm never going to, even if people, if there's more resellers out there than there is collectors, I'm still going to be out there collecting. Uh, probably not as much, but whenever a deal pops up, I'll hop on it. But just don't stop for that reason. Because deals are out there, and they will always be out there, no matter what. Um, but we're going to move on right now, and I'm going to answer some questions that some... Uh, YouTubers that used to be on YouTube that aren't anymore. I know some of them are, but the majority of them left. Um, but anyways, Jeff, a.k.a. Spokesman, uh, he asks, Has your taste in games changed from then to now? Honestly, it kind of has. Um, I only used to be able... I only used to be into, like, you know, some sports games and some... Uh, action adventure games and those are my game, go to games basically when I wanted to play um, when the American Gamer was here it only lasted for about eight months but when they were here uh, the owner's kid asked me if I uh, if I heard about Dragon's Dogma and I said no and he says well it's an RPG I said I don't technically play RPGs because to me it, it bored me I could never get into them especially if they were uh, text based um, I like the action action style though and we'll get to that in a second he told me to he told me if I wanted to try it out I could try it out because it came with the Resident Evil 6 game so I was like all right I'll give it a whirl you know I'll check it out and he let me I, I was playing it I played all the way through the demo and completed the demo and I was like wow I was like this is an RPG I was like what happened to like you know walking up to an enemy and then having like attacks po uh, potions spells or whatever then you have to go to that then you go to attack and you have to type or choose which type of attack you go to kick and then there will be another sub menu coming up that says super kick regular kick that's the kind of shit i don't like but if it's a game like dragon's dogma where you just fucking annihilate the shit out of like action rpgs there we go yeah i'll play it i love them and uh i mean that's what kind of technically got me into rpgs um i hate i hate text-based RPGs. I, I don't have the patience for that. Um, I don't mind grinding as long as I don't have to grind for hours on end. That's one thing that annoys me. I, I can't, I don't understand how anybody else can sit there for like four hours and do the same thing over and over and over again just to level up like three levels. Um, but anyways, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for asking the question. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next one. <laughs> And this one comes from uh, the YouTuber Lethko. He asks, in your opinion, do you think retro, the retro gaming landscape is moving more towards emulation-based solutions instead of original hardware? Um, yes, I do believe that's what's happening because of the inflation of, of retro video games. Not the inflation so much, um, too, as scalpers. Scalpers are gouging the shit out of, out of the pricing on... Uh, NES games and Super Nintendo, anything Nintendo. If anything has the word Nintendo on it, everybody, all the scalpers think that it's it's a fucking gold mine. Um, I remember when I could get a GameCube for fifteen bucks, ten or fifteen bucks. Now everybody's asking like fifty to sixty dollars, at least in my town, um, just for the console, the wires, and a controller. That's it. And um, I mean, honestly. If you can get a Raspberry Pi and turn that into a Mini NES or a Mini SNES or or a Mini Sega console like I have, I mean, fuck, that's the only way to do it. You can't afford to pay like you know over fifty dollars a fucking game. Ugh. Excuse me. So I took it upon myself. There were too many scalpers for the NES Classic when it came out, and I was going through chemotherapy treatments, and I couldn't stand outside in the cold because 
I had neuropathy at the time. When, uh, neuropathy is the tingliness of the fingertips and the, and the, the toes as well. Um, so if I would have been out in the cold for more than like 15 minutes, my hands would like literally freeze and then I would get sick. Um, so I, I, I just decided to stay home and I knew if I waited long enough that there would be uh, a case out there that resembles the NES Classic Mini. So I ordered that, got myself a Raspberry Pi, turned it into the NES Mini Classic. So, and hey, I also added the Game Boy and Game Boy Color Collection on that as well. Why not? Um, yeah, but anyways, I mean, yeah, that, I could see that happening. And Nintendo knows it's happening to their consoles that they're releasing. And when they release a Super NES Mini, they basically left a hidden message in there saying, have fun with it. So why not? They're basically giving us permission to do it. So... I hope that answers your question, Lethko. Thanks for asking that. Uh, moving on, uh, my friend Master Tuba Three used to be on YouTube as well. He asks, "How has picking up retro games changed over the years for you?" Um, it is ch it's changed dramatically. Like I used to get big bundles of, of video games almost on a we weekly basis, and then just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I just 2015, I stopped. I, I just, I can't afford it. Collecting for video games is becoming more expensive now. It's a very, it's becoming more expensive than, you know, fixing up a car or having a hobby in cars. It's crazy. That's how I, that's why I'm saying it's out of control. I mean, fuck, if you want little Samson for the NES in the box, you're going to pay like almost thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. That's a fucking impressive used car right there. You know what I mean? Holy shit. I mean, it, it's, it's getting out of control, man. I mean, I understand some of the shit's rare, but it shouldn't be that expensive. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Alright, uh, thanks for asking that. Let's see. And the next question is from Randy Gellion. And he asked, how do you truly feel about scalpers and resellers? I believe that there's a difference between scalpers and resellers. Resellers, they'll work with you on a price, and they're willing to do trades. They're fellow collectors, or, um, or they're just, you know, people out there that want to make money that also aren't afraid to give anybody a deal. Scalpers, on the other hand, are out to make a dollar. They don't give a fuck. If they, if they have a price in mind, they're going to stick with that price. Unless they, they're holding on to it for like maybe over a month. Then they might lower the price down by five or ten bucks. But other than that, I mean, they're fucking scumbags. I hate dealing with scalpers, and I will never deal with them ever. Um, but anyways, I hope that answers your question. Sorry it's such short. I'm trying to keep this video within 15 to 20 minute length. Um, so it doesn't take that long to upload and you guys can watch it. Uh, basically that's the gist of this video and uh, I'm going to start trying to make new um, videos weekly on subjects touching retro gaming or current gen gaming um, called the Weekly Sin. So with that being said, this has been Sin and Enigma saying keep it retro 90 style, signing off.